Welcome back to the Last Neanderthals podcast. So, Khashal's a KCL graduate, smart guy. I'm currently studying at the University of Liverpool, studying PPE in my third year. And we're just going to talk about our uni experience because we know a lot of you will be going into first year in a couple of weeks. And any advice we have, we'll share with you all of that stuff. So, Khashal, what's five pieces of advice you have for everyone going into uni this year and even people going into third year second year whatever most serious year talk to them my advice would be do little but do more often don't be that guy that puts off work right to last minute there's you can get ill anything can happen stress you don't get as much support as that you have available throughout the year I know you feel demotivated, but this is why you got to do little but more often. Consistency over intensity. Honestly, it's life-changing. So I basically what I did at university is I set myself two-hour target. The days I would work, I would do a circle. In the days I won't work, I would do a cross. And I gamified my experience. So I would just do this challenge with a friend. I was like, in one month, let's say, you know, if I get more circles than Wally, he will have to, you know, I don't know, buy me boxing gloves or things of that nature. You can make it fun. Like you look at Duolingo, I know he's not the best at teaching you how to study, but it keeps people hooked. Why does it keep people hooked? Because it gamifies the experience. So the algorithms that Instagram uses, how they gamify your experience, other platforms as well, you got to implement that in your own studies. I think Whoop does that really well as well. You know how you get like the data, how well you slept, things like that. So when you're seeing that you got a bad sleep, you want to sleep on time. So yeah, do little and do more often. That that that's first one. Second one I already mentioned, gamify your learning experience. So number three would be avoid the distraction. So you know, at university, a lot of these kids they wanna be the popular kids and, you know, they want to be involved in the drama and the gossip. I think it's a really, it's a waste of time. I think a lot of it is like removing the distractions, you know, how people were like, oh, I want to succeed. I want to do more. A lot of it, you just need to say no to things. You don't have to go to every party. You don't have to go to every social gathering. You don't have to, you know, say yes to everything. Like, Don't, don't be a yes man. Prioritize yourself. And cut the BS out. Like, if you're consuming content too much online, all of these things, if you cut things out and you avoid the distractions, I think that's most of it, to be honest. It's really important in first year to build foundations for your second and third year. Because I know for us, the first year doesn't count, count towards our final uh, degree. However, it's still important to like lay the roots and kind of, get in a routine as well, figure out what you're going to do for the next two years, how you're going to cope with now living out on your own for the first time, which most people will be doing, maybe cooking for the first time for yourself, um, doing all of these responsibilities as well as getting an education. And I think balancing that with uh, focusing on your health, going to the gym, these kinds of things are really important to experiment with in first year and figure out what sort of routine works best for you. Are you someone who would go to the gym before uni and then go to uni, or are you someone who would do that after? And I think getting involved in like clubs and like sports teams, things like that can help with that too, because it can give your week structure. If you have to go to training on a particular day and things like that. So yeah, I think that's really important as well. And if you want to have fun at uni, then definitely go for it it's important to socialize and make friends um and not just be stressed all the time and 24 7 thinking about work however i think you're spending nine grand a year to get an education so it's important to put that money to use or else it's such a big waste um so yeah have your fun and whatever but get a structure get a routine um so that you can succeed and be like Hushal, who is now a graduate. Can I can I add something to that? Yeah. 
think one of the most important things you mentioned there is joining societies and things of that nature. You're not just paying nine grand for a degree. Like, that's not enough. I think it, getting involved in societies and things of that nature is going to help you so much in your future because especially in the recession that we're going through, experiences everything. And if you have experience, if you've been involved with projects, uh, if you've been involved in projects and you understand the human skills and negotiations and just running a society or whatever it is, working with other people, that goes a long way. Honestly, that's the type of things they look at when you're when they are hiring you after university, just a degree isn't enough. They're looking at, you know, can you solve problems? Can you handle constructive criticism? And these are skills. You will learn them at, you know, societies. You'll make mistakes. And the consequences are not that big, you know, as, as, as they are at work. So getting that, like, foot in the door, it's like a little, it's like a little, um, little step into the real world societies are. Um, so I think that is such a, because society for me, I, I was the vice president and events manager of theology and religious studies society, honestly, life changed it. And, you know, the part like we put on the first grid game event, social speaking, like public speaking, I did interviewing. And, you know, recently I was involved in a Oxford summer camp and I was able to speak so well because of all that exp experience I had uni at university. And, you know, the feedback was great, but it was all that work, you know, that added to me eventually speaking at Oxford. So I think joining society is, you know, is essential, you know, to get more out of your education. Yeah. And I think another thing that's important to uh, just expect going into uni is it's not like college and school where your teachers kind of help you at every step along the way. Um, there's a lot of individual work that needs to go into it, hours that you have to put into it yourself uh, to really get a good grade. So I think it's important to keep that in mind as well when you're going into uni. Um, maybe some of the lecturers might not even be so great. So in those cases, you have to put in even more effort to get the grade you want. Yeah. So that actually links to my fourth point is like make most of the resources. I I was stuck getting like scraping two ones and how I ended up getting first in more, most of my assignment was literally just seeing my teachers at least three times per essay. I made that like a strong habit, a principle that I have to do this. Um, and that was the game changer because every teacher is kind of looking for something different. They have their own like, ideal like structural essay they're looking for certain readings that they want you to use sometimes like teachers are happy for you to for example use youtube videos but other teachers it's a no go for them you know they want that that particular reading list that you've been assigned so if you know things like that if you like literally just tell them like you know what this is this is what my central argument is going to be you know you can ask them for advice like how you can back it even if your argument isn't valid they will tell you there instead of you your foundation being wrong your whole process of thinking being incorrect you write an essay you put in hours and hours of work into it and then you end up getting like a two two or fail so i think seeing your teachers at least three times should be every at least once or twice at least once or twice you have to do that um yeah, that's that. That was my fourth point, basically. Anything else you would like to add to that? No, yeah, I think that's that, that's a very good point. It's very important to just get their feedback because, at the end of the day, these the kind of subjects that we're doing, um, a lot of it is very subjective. So it really depends on who's marking it, and uh, if you get an insight from that person uh, in regards to what exactly they're looking for, and what they want from you then it's going to make your life so much easier. Imagine going down a rabbit hole and then uh, the you speak to the lecturer and they say they're not even interested in that or they don't even want to know about that or it's not relevant. And you'd rather find that out than do the, write the essay and then afterwards uh, in your feedback, they tell you, no, it's not good enough. 40% fail. Yeah. <laughs> Try again next time. And then you're capped in the next time if you don't have mitigating circumstances. 
Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Did, did you, uh, in our uni, I think, I don't even know if it's possible to fail like an essay or an assignment. Like that was that possible in games? Yeah, it's possible, yes. Really? Yeah, some people fail them. Um, you can you can fail an essay. It can very easily happen if you don't do your readings and you don't see your teachers very easily. I've, I think in our uni, you, I've not heard of anyone who's fa- failed an essay. But the issue with essays is it's very difficult to get those high grades. Like the, to cross the boundary into getting a first is quite difficult. Like you can't get 90%, for example, on an essay which would yeah. bump your grade up for the others. But you can write a really good essay and still get 67, 68. You can write an amazing essay and get like 74 yeah. max probably. So it's yeah. very yeah. difficult. It's very difficult to get past that first um, border. So yeah, you do have to really try your best. For me, I've got uh, economics, which you can get like the 90% and stuff in to kind of help. <laughs> But with essays, it's really difficult. So you do need to put the time in, in my opinion. And any coursework you get, like presentations and stuff, I found that they can be really helpful because the teachers uh, are more willing to give higher grades in that. So if you spend a lot of time in that and perfect them, that can really bump your grade up too. 100%. Um, You know, if you get like 78%, that's like almost publishable level. That's what they said at King's. Yeah, That's if you get those kind of marks, and I know some kids who got like above eighty, so yeah, Jeez. insane man, insane. But yeah, it's a subject. I mean, this is a, it's a subjective subject, <laughs> so it's you know th- these are difficult to get good grades on. My fifth advice would be is to ask questions. Like you're not in university to you like you're not there because you know it all. You're there to learn. And don't go with this, like, inferiority and superiority complex that, you know, actually more of superiority complex that you want to show how smart you are, which is what I was guilty of. And it came from a sense of inferiority because I wanted to prove a point that, to myself, really, that, okay, I'm smart enough and I can be, you know, I I, I do belong at this university because I was given predicted grades and I got into Kings that way uh, because of COVID. Um, so, you know, that put a chip on my shoulder. I started getting two ones and first, and then, you know, that kind of went away. But because I, I was always a student who was sharing his ideas in the class. And, yeah, they were great. Like, the teacher appreciated them. And, you know, I contributed. But I think where my learning increased the most is when I asked questions about things I didn't know. You know, when I became more focused on asking questions rather than flexing how much I know. So I think asking questions is so, so important. Like,